we'd like to thank you all for joining us here at this board workshop scheduled for today, February the 28th, 2023, 2 o'clock p.m. What we will do, we will start with Mr. Thomas Bowling, and then following that, those of you that may have public comments or questions, at that time we will allow you to come up, and that way you will get more than three minutes. You will get ample enough opportunity to express yourself. If that pleases everyone. <coughs> We're good with that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mr. Bowling. Thank you, Ms. Gillard. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're here, let me start over. I don't want to start off a meeting saying we're here today. It sounds like a funeral. Um, <laughs> I'm actually here to give you an update on just our revitalization plan across the board. Um, but I'm going to save the best for last, the best being Crescent City, um, because that's where we've had quite a bit of um, news lately and and I'm sure you know you've seen it um, as a matter of fact uh, the Palaka Daily News reached out to us yesterday just to get us to comment on some of the things that um, are going on in the uh, just in our county and it's particularly about the location of um, the the proposed location potentially for the elementary school down in Crescent City. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to do a quick overview of where we are with the entire, pro with the entire plan. Okay, as you notice, it's a 10-year plan, and it's broken down into three phases where we'll build three schools at a time. We'll use special facilities funding for the junior senior high schools because they are the most expensive. Um, and then we'll use the bond dollars to pay for elementary schools, and we'll do two at the time. So we're in phase two, I'm sorry, in year two of this 10-year plan. All right, so phase one, special facilities funding is Crescent City Junior Senior High School. Um, funding for that is currently in the legislature, and, and uh, it was on the governor's initial budget, so um, our fingers are crossed. And uh, we, we feel very confident that it will be funded. And if that happens, um, we'll start construction on time uh, this summer. Greg, if I say anything wrong, let me know. Um, the bonds, the first two bond schools will be um, the former site of E.H. Miller in Palatka. And then in Crescent City, um, we initially, when we named the two sites or the three sites for phase one, we named the Miller Middle School site. Um, but since that time, uh, we have, in addition to some strong opposition by the Historical Society and a few others, um, we were uh, approached, and I'll get into that uh, in a little more detail, about a potential um, alternative site, and I'll tell you all about that in just a minute. So uh, as it stands right now, where, we build, where we'll build that uh, school in Crescent City uh, it's a little bit in flux, and, uh, and that's kind of why we're having the board workshop today, just so you can be completely familiar with everything that's going on. All right, so phase two, special facilities funding. Um, we'll, we'll shoot for uh, that particular funding for Interlock and Junior Senior High next. Uh, and the next two bond schools, um, the second Palatka site is still undetermined. Uh, we have a few ideas, and we're trying to work out the details with those now, and, and when we make that decision. Um, we'll get back to you with that. And then Melrose Elementary is the other. And as a matter of fact, um, while I'm talking about timelines for making decisions, um, Greg and I and Travis and other stakeholders will develop a timeline when decisions will be made, um, whether it be um, rezoning or whatever happens as a result of new schools. And also when, when we'll announce the locations for uh, additional sites. All right, phase three, special facilities funding will then shift to Palaka Junior Senior High School. Of the three comprehensive junior senior high schools, we uh, intend to rebuild. Palaka is the most current, so that's why it's last on this plan. Um, Browning Pierce Elementary School and then its sister school, Robert H. Jenkins Elementary, will be um, the other two. Right now, we, we intend to build on those existing sites, all three of them. Unless... We tick somebody off about that along the way. Is that a bad joke? <laughs> no. Okay. It's reality. All right, so um, some of the items that are completed for design management, we acquired CRA and uh, design manager Greg Kelly, who's to my left. 
Um, the architects have been chosen for the uh, first three schools. Um, Casper for the Palatka School and for the two, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Crescent City Schools, CRA um, was, was chosen. Um, the Bond Oversight Committee, um, we're receiving applications as I speak. Um, Ashley McCool is receiving those and she'll be reaching out to the board members shortly um, to, to finalize that process. Uh, and those um, bylaws have already been adopted by the board and its policy. Uh, design advisory committees, um, those, those applications will start in a few months. Um, we want to get closer to the time where they'll actually have something to do. Um, and those are the, the, the people who will oversee those at the district level, the elementary schools will be Sarah Jean McDaniel and the secondary schools will be JT Stout. And they'll facilitate those meetings and they'll uh, push out additional information about them as we go forward. So as we prepare for construction, um, we are working on an RFQ for construction management um, right now. And so um, once we push that out and, and settle on construction managers uh, for the, the three sites, wherever they wind up being, we'll, we'll uh, present that to the board and it should be upcoming in the next, I don't know, month, maybe a little bit better. Um, we're in the process of doing detailed Castalda reports. Um, the ones on um, the Crescent City um, Elementary School site are kind of in ho on hold right now. Um, we don't want to do a lot of unnecessary work just based on how this whole process um, shakes out. The, um, the Palatka has already been submitted to DOE for cursory review and uh, Crescent City has already been approved. All those things on the right, um, topographical and hazard and surveys and geotechnical reports, demolition, demolition plans for each site and the timelines, all of that is being developed through Greg's office um, as well as a conceptual plan for each site. Um, again, it would look a, a heck of a lot different at the Miller site than it would the alternative site and I'll explain why when we get to it. Um, but we did um, insert into um, CRA's contract for the Crescent City Elementary site. If we do shift, we'll renegotiate the terms of that. Um, so CRA won't be able to stick us at that high rate they're sticking to us at the uh, <laughs> Crescent City site. Um, just because it's so much more difficult there, to be fair, it's, it's a small site um, and it's, it will have to keep buildings and build around the existing buildings. So um, very complex plan and, and as well as trying to get the traffic off the road and you name it, retention ponds, it's, you, you'll earn your money if you, you have to build there. All right, so let's just talk about very quickly, and you may have seen this before and you may not have, but this is uh, how the new school will be constructed at the Crescent City site. This kind of looks, this is how we'll do things. We won't have to worry about this with either elementary school in the first round. Um, but we will probably have to, oh, I'm, I'm sure we, I'm 100% certain we'll have to uh, develop a plan similar to this with some of the elementary school bills in the latter rounds. But this is the school as it sits now. And the first thing we'll do is construct um, a new classroom wing, two story, and, a, and then a, gymne a gymnasium slash band room, which is a two story building as well. And I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit because you see that third building that popped up in the back, CTE? Because of um, some appro appropriations we've put in for, we wanna go ahead and build that building right off the back. And then Greg, we can get that done, right? Yeah, so that's, this is just a, a placeholder at DOE so we can modify, change anything. Okay, so this will probably go like that plus <clears throat> that CTE building in the back. And then he'll demolish um, building 19, building 21, and building 24. And then he'll replace that with an administration and guidance building um, with a media center and a um, uh, media center being the second floor of that. And then ESC wing on the second building, first floor, and then CTE classroom separate uh, uh, second floor. Did I say that right, Greg? Yes. And then this will be demolished. Um, the, the administration, the current administration building, uh, the shops, the ag lab, the media center, 
and then they'll take out those portables as well. And then the final construction would be a classroom, another classroom wing and cafeteria. And then the last thing is clean up, uh, demolish this last portion of the building, and then replace it with parking lots and landscaping, et cetera, et cetera. And there's your new high school. Um, what I want to go ahead and point out right here is I've never seen a high school look like that. Um, because it's just blocks, and that's because they don't look like that. That's just where the, that's the placement of the buildings. Um, the design hasn't been realized yet, and that's kind of important, um, just an important thing that I, I want you to keep in mind. No matter where we build, um, the window dressing can look as we want it to look. All right, so let's talk about the Miller Spike site specifically. Let me ask you this before yes, we move on. Regarding uh, the high school, class will be in session, school will be in session, but they will be building in areas that are away from the students. And then once that phase is done, they're demolished, but these people will have somewhere to move into. Yes, ma'am, the, the construction comes first, and then the demolition and all that's done without a single kid yeah, getting kids are there. there was an order that we built the gym before we tore down the existing gym. We did the cafeteria, that, that we synchronized it to work along those lines. Yes, ma'am. You know, that's not, not uncommon to do it that way, yeah. No, I'm, my main concern was the students still being there while this construction is going on and making sure that they are where they're supposed to be. And there should be no portables or anything. I mean, yeah. it's just. Now, Travis, you know, Travis Woods took a trip and actually saw all this in, in progress, <coughs> right? Chiefly. Yes. Okay. Just, just like this. And it just works out. Right. <coughs> all machine, well, all machine. Yeah, you see that. Would I mean, be that's our all the school administrators yes, would be, be nervous about something like yeah. that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, thank you. Just, I realize that's not the the final exact, and it's just blocks holding the place of those buildings. But what are we talking as far as square footage difference? It is, it is a good bit larger. I don't have exact numbers, but I can I can get them to Travis to give them. I'm just from the the aerial and the changes, it made it look like it went from being bigger to being smaller, and I realized they're maybe two, two stories. Two right, so I was just curious if it's going, it, because it looks like it's accommodating more uh, parking uh, as well on the property, so I uh, just want to make sure we're not shrinking the, no, the size. No, we, we, are, we are definitely getting larger. I'll get those numbers to him, though. Well, and, and what we were looking at was the junior senior high and really our property would go on to I guess old 17 doesn't it Travis uh, a while ago that, that's, that's what where we were the looking. baseball field is the old behind the baseball field it goes all the way to the old hard road back here only our, one section yeah that's our goal is no no portables ma'am I'm sorry no portables oh no portables to begin with no absolutely <laughs> what you yes, say to begin with the girl um, Hopefully uh, we'll we'll grow so quickly and well maybe that's not a good thing. It's just <laughs> depends. I, I don't know if this is appropriate time, but um, the PE teacher in me sees no fields. I see a softball field that we have. I see a baseball field. I see the practice field is now involved in a uh, um, well the first building. But I see no, I see no practice fields. I don't see a P outside playground. Um, maybe, oh, maybe oh. back where the tennis courts are. We we can we can coordinate and work something out there. Again, this was done as an exercise for DOE to, to get a placeholder for the funding. We will come back now and work through it and okay. we'll answer all those questions and work out those those issues and figure out where the practice fields are going to be. And, unless and this is not the, the last workshop. And so unless we as we develop uh, things and, and have an idea where I think we're going, I'll bring it back to the board. Awesome. Unless we've sold more of that property, we had purchased a prior board, purchased more property to old 17 below the baseball field there. Um, it's really part of the baseball field and almost to where you see the retention pond, that area goes back. Okay. to old 17 it's uh, fenced okay. in it, it, okay. Greg, a lot of that design design committee would address a lot of that sure, too as well sure. yes sir yes sir but we talked about below the tennis courts there 
back. That way we looked at it. There are other areas, but if we need to clear something, we'll work something out with the design committee and, and bring it back for you. Okay, we ready? Yes, sir. Is that the last we're talking about the high school? Um, no, ma'am. We okay. can at, at the end we, we'll okay. open it up as much as you like. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, the Miller site specifically, there's there's a lot going on there. Um, originally, okay. So we have three pieces of property um, in Crescent City that we own. Um, the current Middleton Burney Elementary School is one. Um, we can't do the plan that you just saw at, at Crescent City and, and build new buildings and then demolish buildings and build at Middleton Burney because it's too tight. We couldn't even get another portable on that school site unless we uh, put it on, either on the playground or take out an oak tree. Um, the other properties are the, the high school, the junior senior high school, and as you can see, it's already tight, trying to find areas for practice fields, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's no room there to put an elementary school. And so the only other place in, in, uh, is, is the Miller site, and, uh, and that's kind of why we said that that's probably our landing place all along, just because um, we don't have the funds to go out and buy a bunch of property. Um, and then it has some advantages to it. The, the disadvantage is the size of it, but the advantage is um, the auditorium and the gymnasium that we could completely renovate, and that's kind of unique for an elementary school, and it could be used for community centers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we saw the value in that. Um, but again, we, we had very few options there. Um, and so <coughs> we know that it's located in a historical, how do you, what, what is it, um, Greg, historical district. historical district, is that what it's called? Yes, sir. It's a National Registered Historical Places. Yeah. Nas National Reg Registered Historical District. And it comes with some rules okay. um, with, with new designs. And uh, I've asked our design manager to take a look at those rules and become very familiar with them because we're, 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 we're in the school district. We're rule followers. Um, and so if, <coughs> if we have to build at the Miller site, um, that site can look how we want it to look or more specifically how the community wants it to look. You know, we don't have any, I, I've seen a poster with um, another elementary school from another county sitting side by side and saying don't bring this to um, Miller and I think the origin of that was when we were putting out information for the bond we used um, that particular school as an example of what a new school could look like. Um, but not all schools will look like that. Every school <coughs> looks different. Um, and, and schools will, um, and that's why we have a design advisory committee to get input from the public uh, and then design a school to make it look as if, you know, something the public would, would um, appreciate. Um, not be an eyesore for any community. Greg, do you want to uh, elaborate on that any? Yes, we we have not t any three schools that have been that are being discussed right now. We have not had any conversations about what they will look like. They can be contemporary. They can look more traditional. We can make them look whatever they however you'd like for them to look. So uh, we don't have any preconceived notions or ideas as we sit here tonight. So we're open for conversation. <coughs> All right. So. I've spoken to a lot of people in the community, and one particular uh, meeting that I had um, bared a little more fruit uh, than, than some of the others that I had. You know, we've, we've heard a million, uh, well, lots and lots of ideas on where to build and how to build, and, and um, but sometimes the plans didn't have any um, practical means of execution. In other words, we had to come up with money that we don't have. Uh, and go prop, go and, and you know I, I won't go into those, but this particular meeting um, was with Patrick Kennedy and Charlie Faulkner. I believe both are Crescent City residents, um, and they wanted to reach out and have a meeting with both me and Miss Pickens, huh? Malaka lives in Malaka. Charlie doesn't live in Crescent City. Either. Okay. <coughs> one is in Malaka and he one lives, doesn't. He lives outside the city. Yeah, outside the city. Okay. So they came in and they met and they wanted to know um, 
they were very interested in the Miller property and they wanted to know um, why we had to put a school there and I explained everything that I had already that I've said here and a few more things about um, student station cost which may be going away so that may not that we that, that may not be a thing anymore um, and it's in the legislature right now so we're, we're hoping um, and it's, it's getting some traction as I understand so I'll kind of leave that out of, out of the equation because we may not be hamstrung by that um, but they wanted to know exactly what it would take to move the new elementary school to an alternative site I said well number one it would take property um, and then we can't we can't give away lakefront property and not stay out of jail you know there have been some suggestions about we just pass it over to someone else <laughs> um, I had a, a, a couple conversations with the city manager and he told me even if he gave it to, to us we don't have a budget to operate it um, we just don't so they at the conclusion of this particular meeting they said well we'll do this we'll reach out and try and find a developer who uh, who will um, buy the Miller site for whatever it's worth and then find some more property and and buy it and donate it to the school district so you can build your school on an alternative site sounds like it's too good to be true right well they asked for a second meeting and so the follow-up meeting they came bearing um, a developer his name was uh, his name is Paul Hassan he's out of uh, Duval County and uh, he said that he would do essentially that he would make an offer and then they even um, identified a site and it's I call it the Hayfield but if it's on the corner of Union Avenue and 308 Highway 308 so if you leave Middleton Bernie out of the parking lot turn right and go down to Union Avenue as if you were going back to the high school if you made a right it's that property right there in the corner and it's just it's a giant hay field uh, you can't miss it. it has the big rolled up bundles of hay there how many acres it's the, I think the entire site is, the entire site is by that one under, a little over 77 acres. I think now, it depends not, on how how much that they want to yeah he's sell. not talking about uh, he'll he's talking about acquiring the 77 acres but not giving us the entire 77 acres I think I would ask for 30 to 35 acres what's the state require for elementary they require about 21 to 21 that's what I thought like usable acres let me right. emphasize usable so I mean it's a great looking site as a matter of fact I mean this is quite beautiful desirable it's right down from where the existing elementary school is and Phil um, uh, let me if I may a couple of <clears throat> a couple of caveats on that is that years ago a prior board helped participated with the county to bring city water and sewage from I guess it's 309 it's where 308 down Union Avenue to the high school mm -hmm. so we didn't have to run a spray field <clears throat> so we've got city water and sewage access plus the bus compounds there if a school were to be built adjacent or in that immediate locale the, just the diesel fuel and wear and tear on buses alone would it would all add up I mean it just uh, that's just a thought down the road I, I when I first heard this I thought well that, that makes a lot of sense but it's just something would have to be calculated at some and, point. and they and they said that they would without a cost give us this 35 he said 40. he would come back and make an well they would uh, depend an on offer and he offer. would he would uh, donate enough land for the school yes ma'am so that's what he so, that's so, what he said he said give him a little bit of time to put together a package and he would be back in touch with us so with that knowledge and everything else that's going on in Crescent City um, we started scrambling we we uh, on the board's agenda today we have uh, an updated resolution uh, to be able to sell the Miller property um, if we do get that offer we also have an <coughs> appraisal um, ordered and uh, Travis I understand you're meeting with the appraiser on Friday um, so so we're we're <coughs> positioning ourselves in case there is an offer to actually um, bring a sale back before the board to be executed and, and then it required that an appraisal appraisal is done of our property to be able to sell it doesn't, doesn't yes, the sir. State it's, require it's, that it's yeah. it's they're doing it Friday okay who's who's the appraiser All right, and so so I'm clear. So, Mr. 
Hussein is interested in purchasing the current Miller site. Correct. And then donating that site. The track, the other track. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, that's it so, sounds it, it sounds a little too good to be true, but as of right now, that's what he's, he's well, saying. Well, yeah. In full dis disclosure, Madam Go Chairman. Ahead. No, no. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I've been uh, having conversations with the mayor and the city manager off and on for several months, and you know, I've continued to tell them. I agree with you as a, as a land use planner, that's not the best place to put a school. And, and early on, you know, I discussed that and said, I don't think the city wants it there or, or the commission, you know, was interested in having it there. And, you know, unlike years and years ago where community schools were small and the neighborhoods were made up of families that had kids, that's not the situation there, nor in any of these other historical areas. I the mean, old baby boomer yeah. schools where kids. Yeah, they, they're school. moving into the suburbs, and and what's happening is you get an older population in those historical areas. At any rate, um, you know, I I kept telling them, you know, find a buyer, and and we'll figure something out. Um, so I'm I'm glad I hadn't heard this. So I'm 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 very happy to hear. Well, that was exciting news for all of us, and and, uh, Bill, and and I hope I hope we can build a school on. And this that's side. why on the appraisal we would um, anything less than less than nine or less than ninety percent, we would definitely bring that back to you. But uh, you know, we we definitely want to. That's why we need the appraisal. We we want to, you know, get the maximum amount from that appraisal as possible. So, Mr. Hussein has a great job ahead of him. Well, I know that he has prior plans. boards have allowed the city to. I think, or, or to put a dock, a walkway down there along the river, the, the lakefront, and I don't know if it's still there or not. No, if, I don't think it, it is. That may be gone now, but that was that was some years ago. But, but we're definitely, you know, just to let you know, we talked a lot about it, but you know, we definitely are trying to work with the city and everyone else trying to make this work. But at the same time, you know, we ha we have an obligation too, and we have. We have limited finances on what we can do as well, so and, I think this is a good opportunity if it works out. And, and, and time frame, that is my other concern, you know, based on our schedule and yes, our bonding. Sir. So uh, I asked Greg issues. to come up with a drop dead date. Are you still working on that, or yes, how long can I we push this all back? Yesterday I sent you a, a tentative schedule. I put together a schedule for E.H. Miller, because right now that's the cleanest one. We, we know where it's going, and we can figure out there's no variables right now with it. So we put something together, and if I gave an adequate time to design the school and an adequate time to build the school, we finish it in toward the end of June in 25, which is great with occupying it in, in August of 25. Mm -hmm. that, that works really good. So I'm gonna tell you, if we get out another 60 <coughs> days or so, August of 25 will be in jeopardy. So we need the next 30 to 60 days to figure out something. Well, we need the appraisal as soon as we can get it in. Yes, sir. He said Friday. I think he well, said Well, they, yeah. they, they meet on Friday. Oh. Get okay. it back. But essentially, they're not. I, I mean, I, they're appraising the property. The buildings are not uh, going to be. I mean, is that part of the appraisal? Well, it would have to yeah. be. But, mm -hmm. but you know, they, they'd make their money. Most of them are going to tear the building down, and then they're going to wind up, I would assume, selling the concrete and, and bricks and whatnot. Now, Mark, you uh, you had something to report about, you know, just realtors talking amongst each other in, in, in your world. Um, an offer was made on the hayfield already, yes, correct? Sir, I was told this morning that Mr. Hussein, his agent, had submitted an offer that had not even been looked at yet. First thing this morning, I don't know where it's but again, that was for the hay field. The, now, my question is the August 25. Technically, those children are in school, right? I mean, they could, we could begin the school year still at Middleton Bernie if we had to, if we had to. Well, I'm thinking maybe when you're wrapping up, even if this one is running behind schedule, you could maybe start the next ones in the subsequent well, rounds. There, there will be ways we can work around that, and, and districts phase new schools in all the time. So it's not, it's not impossible to do it. It's, 
in the scheme of things, it is very close to, to moving most of us. Yeah, we've done, I, we've I really done it here before. Start a school yeah. year in, in Crescent <clears throat> City out at, at Middleton Burning and then move to the wherever Nor we Nor would move. I, but I also don't want to put a 60-day um, a deadline on a, on a deal that is very essentially close. probably much better for Crescent City and for the new Crescent City Elementary School. I don't want us to to put a drop dead date of 60 days and then, you know, things just still aren't really fixed. I, I, I'd i hate to see that happen. So. Well, I mean, with the boards, I mean, just overall consensus and I'll seek it right now. Um, I mean, I can see this to its end and then we can try and make up time if that's what I'm hearing. And I'm kind of looking for a consensus. And what I mean, see what? this to its end, um, leave it on the market until this developer says he's going to either buy it or not. I well, but uh, until. Well, y'all go ahead. You know, I, I'm, I'm one that says, you know, you show me the money. You know, and property's only worth what you can, I'm from the that best you can too. get out of it. You know, so then you have to decide <coughs> is it worth what's been offered for it. So. Well, well, the other thing to consider too, I mean, again, we, we had this conversation earlier. We want to maximize whatever Absolutely. Uh, income we can get from that other property for the simple fact that we're giving up an auditorium and a gym at the current site. Mm -hmm. Not that we could build that exactly there, but we might could be able to, to enhance that property with that additional funding. I, well, that's, that's, and that's what I meant. You're, you're echoing what I tried to right, say. Right. So... <clears throat> You know, it, in being a realtor and having worked on some pretty big projects, um, yeah, I mean, a 30-day time frame for him to do his due diligence, I mean, obviously, that's the most valuable property in Crescent City, vacant property now, period, and maybe in South Putnam, other than Wallachia, uh, because of the, the, the waterfront and, you know, what the, the downtown revitalization, the Main Street program, and all the initiatives that have been have been initiated down there so um so i don't i don't want to get i don't want to you know i mean i think that easily they could make a decision in 30 to in a maximum 60 days okay. and charlie Faulkner and i go way back we we've worked on projects over the years and uh he's uh well it's, he's it's, a great guy great engineer great character he's got well, some great stories having having been through this for so many years, it's not uncommon to have to displace students while you're building on a site. I mean, that's you, you just do it, and, and it, you, you find ways to do it, and, you know, and with the, with the new state parameters on school safety and safety standards, and that we, we need new, new facilities for our kids to be in line with what's being required now. But the good news is it's just right down the street from the you know, the, the alternative site would be right down the street from the existing one. So, yes, it, it it would calculate. I'm telling you, diesel buses, transportation, the whole nine yards would would make a lot of difference. Yep. I, I I obviously I think it's great, um, but what you said was follow it through till there's an offer on Miller. Like if he's maybe already made uh, an offer on the, the Hayfield property, then um, then really if he donated us the acreage, even if that person didn't decided he didn't want the Miller property, he just wants that property, you know, all of the, the property that the, uh, that the family owns there, then that's what's, what's stopping us from getting the started. The only thing that's stopping us is that it's we can't do the enhancement to the school that we would. But is that a deal breaker? The one one attractive thing about um, him buying the Miller property is it's him buying the Miller property. Um, I, we we just have a hard time leaving a lot of um, turnkey schools abandoned. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and there's a million different reasons why, and I'm sure you know, but um, we're, 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 we have the desire to do that less and less. Um, and so that's why we're, most of our, or everything else um, going forward will be at a, a current site. 
Well, I, I do agree with Ms. Pickens and what she's saying is that if he wants to donate 25 acres of the 77 acres to the school district and we can go forward, I mean, um, that money from the sale of that property could build an auditorium slash gymnasium. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about a, a pretty significant amount of money. You mean if the Miller property yeah. is sold? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't know what the property appraiser has to appraise for, but, you know, it's that's pr whatever it is. Mark, do you know? Almost 4.5, 4.4. 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you could build a pretty nice gymnasium auditorium for that. I mean, so, yeah, I, I like your idea. I mean. But it, so it's not a, if he donates us the land, but then decides that. He don't want to buy the property. Right. That should not be a deal breaker mm -hmm. for us. That his, his motive is, obviously, he wants to develop that prime property. Yes. You know, and that's the reason for the other. And then, you know, then you get to thinking the tax benefit for the, the city of Crescent City would be tremendous. But we're thinking more along the lines of school. And, that's what we in the business. You know, would we need somebody to donate us that property no we could go look for property but I, I don't think I think we need to see this through and see what what opportunity there is here right that's just my, my opinion well I think that madam chairman that, that uh that you know David I hear what you're saying but you know from a time frame standpoint if we want kids to be in school August of 25 then you know our options are pretty much tied down to getting that alternative site now and moving forward with it. Well, and that, that, that's what yeah. I, I didn't, okay. didn't yeah. diminish. That okay. wouldn't be gotcha. diminished because, um, I mean, we can transport food to a site yeah. if they had to shut down cafeterias and they're working on it. I mean, there's all kind of things that we've done before that can gotcha. be done again. Okay. But sounds like the gentleman is really interested if he has made an offer on the hay field. So prayerfully it will work out but i don't think we we are in a position to go out looking for property ourselves mm -hmm. we're not, not yet. so we don't right we now don't we don't have money. the, the right. funding source for that right. yeah yep. no and, money. and that's not what we're in the business of doing so so i, I mean i, I agree yeah. they're trying to meet our needs and we've ex thomas has explained to them what our needs are and i think you know they're they're trying to do that yes. it's not a done deal it's kind of like we got to see some money. We got to see something before we David can proceed. Said it, show me the money. Yeah, well, I mean, that's when it comes to, uh, you know, selling property, you, you you say, you know, you say what it's worth and then who, who's who got the money, you know, and, and it's what you can get for it. Madam you know, Chair, that's all the prepared um, information that I have. If you want to, I'll be here if you want, you know, okay. whatever, however you want to proceed. All right, that will be our questions, and then we would certainly want to allow uh, Mr. Danny Miller. If I may, please. Uh, wait you want to think? The school board um, meeting to speak. Holly, okay, yeah. now. I was unsure of the format. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, at the school board meeting, you're going to have three, three minutes, minutes, but I see you've asked I'll keep it short. for a waiver. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yes, ma'am. Thank there. you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, I, I have, yeah. okay, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And then the lady here. I just have a question about the high school property. So, so that may, this may not be the right time. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think, yeah, go ahead. This is okay. Tom's so, presentation. um, my question is our first, um, building is going to be on the area that when Mr. Miller went to school was a swamp. Okay. Um, what are we doing? How can I, as a board member, be satisfied that in 20 years that that building is not going to be in the shape that the 7th and 8th grade building is now? We have already, or it's a high school building now. We started out doing soil borings there to, A, figure out what the issue was with the buildings that, that, are, that are failing there. Mm -hmm. we, we soon discovered that there was some settlement, some movement there, which led us down the path. We did a couple more soil borings out in the middle of that field that's there to see what it is. Um, we are taking in measures to, with our uh, structural engineer. I don't know if that is some kind of <coughs> enlarged footings right now at this moment. I don't know if it's pilings. I don't know if it's, but okay. we have we have built on a lot worse sites than that. I've, I've got a school in Panama City that's on wooden pilings right now. I've got a school in Marathon.
on down so into pieces over actual concrete pile that was uh, <coughs> eight feet up in the air. So whatever we need to do there, I have already started working with DOE to get that money in the budget for the process. Is he, is, are you speaking about Crescent City High School? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yep. We were aware of something. Oops. The way that site drops off there, <coughs> I, I just day one when I saw those buildings had the cracks in them, I realized there was movement going on. There. Danny may know or Mark, I, I was under the impression Mr. Franklin Gautier may have donated that property to build the high school years ago. Is that do you? That's what I. That's what I had always. Heard. And so it, it, you know, it's all it was woods and it, the great Gautier family, a pioneer family like the Millers and the Pickens and all of us that from here they they uh, gave the property in, in in the forefront and it's turned out to be a it's going to be a very more centralized location now to what's happening in Wallaca you know to, it, it just makes good sense if if this works out and Greg you're primarily talking about the building that's uh, closest to the uh, football field yes, yes, right the, right. Just, right. Just for that would have been the da that would have been and the damper it, part it, of the it, area seriously when i started in the 80s i didn't even use it for pe because right. there were so many yeah. holes mm -hmm. and then when they built the when dixie they brought i, I cannot even tell you how many loads, loads of dirt, of dirt. Yeah. so i don't want to you know i mean there are problems with the areas in the south end that you know are not very stable and so I just, I don't know. I just want to be 100% sure that, that that's, it can be built there. Right. Creek's probably too strong a word, but there is it's some a, water that runs right down the middle of that. And I've talked to DOE already about yeah, there is a drainage to convert that around and, and get that out of the equation and everything too. Okay. So your soil borings have found, I mean, uh, from the engineering standpoint that um, the base below the superficial um, soils is, is pretty solid? It, actually, out where the fields are, where we're going to build, uh -huh. there's there's some area out there we're going to have to deal with as you go down. Okay. It, it, it is up on the hill, up on the hill, that is loose, so we're probably going to have to pull that out and repack that. But whoever put that in didn't do a good job packing it down there and getting it settled. So okay. Uh, Travis, it's a, I mean, it's water running through that. It's a huge culvert it underneath. A, a I don't know how that's deep said, it yeah. is, but yeah. it's, yeah, that's there's water. To, when I said creek, creek may be too strong a word, but there's water running yes. through Yes. It's a seepage drain. It uh, runs through there. And that, I know that that was over many, many years have, have been filled, you know. Yeah. But I know that it can be, like you were talking about, you can if you have to dig it out and repack it, you can figure out a way to do yeah, it. We'll put all that in culverts and divert it around out of the way. So. Okay, we do have a request from Mrs. Lisa Kane uh, DeVito. If you will come, state your name and <coughs> give your address for the record. I'll see if this works. Hey, Phil. Hmm? Hi, good evening. Thank you, Chairman Gilliard and school board members. My name is Lisa Kane DeVito. I reside in Crescent City at 108 South Main Street, uh, zip 32112. I get my mail at P.O. Box 280. Um, thank you for this comment time. Um, there's a lot of new information today. I have notes written all over the place. I was not expecting this presentation. Um, the first thing I would like to ask is that um, if it's possible that a copy of the presentation be made available to the public. Um, and that's been done in the past, I think. Uh, secondly, I would like to say that um, some people here are aware I'm a member of the Crescent City uh, Commission. Um, I'm not here representing the commission because there are many things that have been discussed here that we don't have a position on. So um, I'm here mainly in my individual capacity and also I am a member and a board member of the Fruitland Peninsula Historical Society. The first thing I wanted to say today is that um, I'm here primarily because um, the Historical Society learned that the school board turned in an application to the Department of Education for the demolition of several buildings on the current Miller Middle School site, 
One of them is a major contributing structure to our National Register Historic District. That is the main administration building. I think it's building five or six, building one. No, it's building one. Um, our National Register Historic District in Crescent City is very important. It was established uh, by the city and a committee of uh, citizens in 1995. It's approved by the U.S. Department of the Interior, um, which the um, federal government, through the National Park Service, um, their documents and figures and the reason for um, historic preservation federal tax credits one of the reasons is, of course, because of the importance of history. The other is that historic buildings and historic districts are very important to the economics of an area. That is why one reason federal tax credits are given for historic buildings. Um, we do not need to lose any more of our historic buildings. And um, so I don't, know, um, I don't know why this building was put on the demolition block before there are plans for the site. Um, this site is about a 40 to 50 foot slope to the water. Um, I heard today that there will have to be um, soil studies or investigations about the topography. Um, there's a commercial site down the street that was um, given a planned unit development designation at least a year and a half ago, and they haven't been able to make any progress because their holding ponds weren't big enough for the amount of paving they wanted to put in. So um, the bottom line is um, I'm very concerned that this building is already scheduled for demolition. And uh, obviously, um, many residents, as well as you have the resolution from the Historic Preservation Society, um, I'm, I'm just stunned and not understanding why it's scheduled for demolition when you don't know exactly what is going to be built, how it's going to be built, or where it's going to be built. Um, also on that property, well, just to back up a minute, I believe one of your um, representatives here said that uh, they want to, it uh, might, might have been Mr. Bowling, I don't recall, said that there are rules as far as new construction that go with the National Register Historic District. That is very true, but you can't replace a contributing structure. That tears a big hole in the district. And um, as well, uh, I heard um, Commissioner, School Board Member Pickens say um, maybe don't put a 60-day drop dead date on this site. Um, to me, that sounds like a wonderful idea. This is a very important part of our town. Uh, we're only two square miles. This is right in the middle. As um, Mr. Leary said, this Miller, current Miller Middle School site, um, it's really in a residential neighborhood. It abuts our, it either is in or abuts our community redevelopment area. Um, traffic is always an issue. Uh, we would like to see the greatest care taken with this location. Um, and one thing that concerns me very much and has concerned me ever since the discussion of building a new school started um, was that uh, really the, the decision and the development of what should be done with the Miller School site should have been done in conjunction with the city government and the citizens of the city of Crescent City. And this has never happened. The first time I learned about the plans for a new school were at a rotary meeting. Um, Ms. McCool and Mr. Surrency were there. It was about a year and a half ago. And um, we were told, the Crescent City Rotary was told about the plans for the bond issue and the new school. And I asked at that time, did they know about the um, historic district? And Ms. McCool said they knew that one of the buildings or more was historic and that they would do everything they could to preserve that main administration building. Neither the Historic Society nor the City Commission has had any discussions with school district staff, and I think that was counterproductive for everyone. Um, as well, um, there's been one community forum um, involving the public, and the Historical Society 
and members of the community wanted it to be specifically about the Miller Middle School. It was a much larger forum, and there's not really been um, planning between the city commission and the school board staff. And I'm very troubled by this because now we're under the gun as to your construction deadline and the needs of the children, which is very important. But had we had these discussions in 2022, that would have been the time because <clears throat> Crescent City, um, I've been told uh, from our CRA, we do have the ability to bond. Um, we do have the ability to go to the legislature and ask them to assist us with economic development funding. There have been quite a few grants from the Department of Economic Opportunities, and we could have investigated looking into one. Um, and as well, we could have talked to the neighborhood about um, how do you feel about the increase in traffic. There are just there are a myriad of issues to be considered um, that I think um, have been raised with Mr. Bowling and are too many to discuss here. But um, I think we need to have that community discussion and the, the discussion with the, the city commission. So anyway, please um, do everything you can to protect our historic district, to look out for as well as the welfare of our children. And by the way, we do have young families moving to Crescent City now, and they live within walking distance of um, both school sites but that is a very positive development. We are starting to be a younger community again. Um, so please work with us. Um, I know discussions have been had with the city manager. Very little information has been forwarded to the commission. Um, and we are, we are a commission governed um, city. So um, that's what I'm asking and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm, I know Mr. Bowling heard well, I'll just add, okay. I, I could have swore I, I'd heard in a previous meeting, maybe before I took office, that, that you were meeting with um, the city manager and the mayor and that there have been ongoing discussions about um, building the site, you know, building the school. Um, isn't that correct? I mean, I, I could have swore I heard that. Um. I did. I did talk with the uh, city manager. It was uh, more informal than anything. I did meet once, um, and they have never been fans um, with developing that or rebuilding that site as a school. Um, I think their interests um, are a little bit different. Down in Crescent City, you, you have two schools of thought. You have those uh, citizens who want it to be redeveloped, and uh, you know everything. Um, Ms. Mrs. DeVito said about the historic buildings. I don't know that this developer has any of that notion in mind when he makes an offer on the property. Um, and then it'll be his property to do as, as, he, as he wishes. You know, some people want um, to redevelop downtown. They, they like to see that reimagine that site, the Miller site, reimagine as perhaps a, a marina or, or just homes. Um, but, but just something to get it back on the tax roll uh, and something that fits the neighborhood. And that didn't, doesn't necessarily speak to the preservation of building one. Um, but I think the, the mayor and the city manager are more from that school um, than just right. preserving it and leaving it as it is and whatever but, else. But there's been an ongoing discussion, I mean, going back to last year, uh, last summer, um, when when things were kind of being put in place with the district about you know our options you yes know, sir, being and, very and limited any 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 place or any meeting any audience that they've asked mm -hmm. of the superintendent or myself we've shown up right and uh, and we we developed a plan and we rolled it out and we sought public input we've had board workshops um, we've gone to different places in the community. We've gone to just about every civic organization, mm -hmm. um, and we've heard from a lot of people. And then we put a plan out, and, and you know, and it was on a ballot to be voted for, you know, just for the overall bond. But right. we put out lots and lots of information surrounding that. So, um, and and our plan has changed again mm -hmm. and again and again right. as a result of public input. Um, so, you know, to say that we 
Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just saying that, that I think we have been up front and saying, you know, I mean, the opportunity to have an existing auditorium in a gymnasium for an elementary school is almost unheard of. Um, and so, you know, and then us having to purchase other property. And so, you know, we, I mean, we were, you know, I mean, I had expressed that to the city manager and the mayor multiple times and, and you know, said, hey, you know, the, the option is, you know, help us, you know, sell the property and then we'll find an alternative site, but understand there's a limit based on the bonding criteria <coughs> and the time frame for building the school and getting the kids in. So um, it looks like we're getting to that now, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, hopefully things will, will work out. But, I hope so. And I do, I do, I do want to clarify, um, there is a difference between a national historic area, a designated area like here in Palaka, the North and South Historic District, right. and a specific structure being declared a national historic structure like St. Mark's Episcopal Church. So there, there is a difference. And, um, and you know, the, the criteria for uh, building in a national historic district is that you have to build it historic looking buildings. I mean, that, that's essentially what that is. Now the building, an, an, an existing building, if it's on the National Historic Register, you know, you'd be almost impossible to, to tear that down. We're, we're about to have yeah. one at okay. one of our facilities down right. in your area, the okay. Sid Martin building. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and we made it very clear. From, Actually, that's Mr. Wagner's area, sorry. We made it clear from the beginning and try to explain this. The reason Miller was on the, you know, the side of our new school it's been very clear, and you, you said this today, is there was no more area at the current Middleton Bernie, and we did not have the funds to buy another site. And, uh, and I, I know that there was even, uh, I think Mr. Miller brought up in a, one of our larger sessions about purchasing more land and making it part of the high school. And that, you know, we had already gone to the state and gone through that process. So really, we had no other options available to us until you know, we've had a conversation about a developer, you know, buying the property and donating the site. So this is really the, the first time we've had another option than we've previously had. Right. Well, we've, we've had a long history of cooperating with municipalities throughout the county, our, our district, whether it's to run city water and sewage like a prior board has done all the way from Crescent City to Crescent City High School down Union Avenue for half a million or more dollars. You know, and, and given the town of Willacca, the old school, which is now their town hall, the uh, town of Pomona Park, the old school there that was yeah. Redlands Christian Migrant, and now they own all that. I mean, the school boards have traditionally done a, a lot. But this property, we, we did pick up adjacent property. I believe the, the uh, I think it was Jody Delzell's sister that owned the house there by the driveway. I mean, we had to we had to clean that up. I think the house burned or, or did something some years ago. So, I mean, we've, we've tried to keep that. The, the, when I say we, everybody in the district for many years to keep that site as pristine, as nice as possible. But when you look at you, the, something being called the, on the National Register of Historic Sites, look at the old first accredited black high school in the state of Florida over here that it was a, the warehouse and the bus compound, it fell apart. And the state wouldn't grant money. No one would give you funds to build a wooden building like that anymore. And uh, I know that former state representative Joe Pickens had uh, had, a, had an appropriate a quarter of a million dollars to plan how to fix it, and it, they never, that was expended and it never happened, and it's just a mess. So, you know, either we're either going to go on to the future or or I don't I don't know what this I guess this some people would want to keep not kind of carve out a part of that school and leave it sitting there in the middle of that property is that what I'm hearing Mr. Vito no, I can speak to that yeah could you speak to that I'd like to just <coughs> I'm, I'm curious what what is it that <coughs> you, you, you're interested in okay well first of all um the building I don't think is in the shape of the other school that you mentioned. No. The, I, I think the building is in much better shape. Um, number one, I think we do not want the building number one torn down until it's determined is it possible to incorporate that in the design of the new school. And I mean, it's a, and I understand the difference between 
a structure that in and of itself is on the National Register and a district. But every building in a district is very important. So uh, just number one, it shouldn't be demolished until there's a determination, can it be repurposed? Um, the rest of the buildings on the site I don't fall into that category. Um, and one point I would like to speak to is um, really the, the planning ideally to optimize the situation for everyone would have been more helpful to have been started with the city commission last year um, because the city commission as a whole does not have the information that's been presented here and has not had the benefit of whatever discussions have gone on with individual um, mayor commissioners or the city manager. We just got that information about a month and a half ago. So as I said, um, we would like to work with the school district in every possible way. And had we had those discussions earlier, and who knows, maybe we could make a little time and room um, I think we need to have some planning discussions and it's possible that we could bring our own resources to the table. It's not possible from our budget, but it might be possible from other sources. Well, that's, so, that's fair. I, I understand what you're saying now I a little more, what we about. but I know that we're under time constraints to get an appraisal and figure out, you know, how to kick the ball right on down the road and, and keep going. Once this process starts, it, it's going to it's going to it's going to have to keep going and I, who doesn't empathize that people have a historic feeling i mean marjorie neil nelson wrote so many articles for so many decades mm -hmm. in the courier journal that you know it just seemed like that was part of the morning news and i thought they worked out of the woman's club but i guess they don't uh the historical society Society. well i think we are now but the the main point i want to leave you with is a there should be no premature demolition of a contributing structure until you know for sure that the property is either going to be sold or that there's no way it can be incorporated. And the other is, um, please do work with the Crescent City Commission as a whole and keep us informed as to what is going on. That would be helpful for the residents. Uh, that would be helpful for everybody in town. Okay, well, I know, I don't know how long you've been in Crescent City, maybe but, maybe decades, I don't know. But yes, my family moved there in 1939, and my father and uncles all graduated from Crescent City schools. My uncle and my dad and brothers all walked to school from Main Street over to South Prospect. So, That's long wonderful. time. That's wonderful. Okay, well, I just, I know that we've never not agreed with trying to help the city when we can. Sure, I understand uh, that. When I say we pass boards, but go ahead, Greg, That's, if you want yeah. to address. I'll, I'll come up, if it's okay. And we will be at the city commission meeting next Thursday. Our request. Good afternoon, Greg Kelly, CRE Architects. First, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I wanted to address a couple of things. First is um, paperwork being submitted on, on tearing down the buildings. We have performed what's called a custody on the buildings there. Um, that's a report that DOE recognizes. And what you do is you go in and do an analysis. I don't know if everybody understands it, so I'll explain it. And you look at the existing buildings and what DOE's interested in, is it more feasible to rework the existing buildings that are there or tear them down and build them new? And it's a very pragmatic, objective it was actually a formula you go in and plug the values in and numbers in and it spits it out and tells you what it is we have done this but it has not been submitted to doe at this time we we've done it so as far as paperwork to tear the buildings down to doe we, we haven't done that at this time it hasn't been submitted we did some early looking at all the sites and everything to help with the bond referendum make sure what was being said was truthful and we could do what was being said. But as far as specifically doing the paperwork, no, it's on hold pending what we find out about the property sale perhaps. Um, another thing, we haven't looked at any new buildings on that site yet. We haven't done any design work. We haven't done anything. Could something work around building one? Perhaps, but I can tell you 
there's a lot of buildings got to be put on that site. That, build, that site is not real conducive for a school the size we're talking about. And, and unfortunately, we're talking about tearing down buildings one and the other buildings kind of juxtapose that is DOE wants me to keep the building on the north end of the site. It's not old enough to tear down yet. So the eyesore to everything or the building up there, uh, we can't right now, we don't have permission to tear that down. So we're gonna have to work with it. So um, there's that building, there's the gym, there's the uh, auditorium where we're looking at keeping and renovating. There's building one now that's left. I have to sit down and see where we're going to put a thousand students on that site right now. I, I don't know how it's going to even work there. So, but when we get ready to sit down and do that, we will gladly sit down and meet with you and show you what our thoughts are and everything else. We just haven't gotten to that point on this specific site yet. So please keep that in mind. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. But in all that, we, we still remember that that's the property that we own in Crescent City. And so if something doesn't work, that then, I mean, work. so um, we all know that the, the Hayfields is a much better place. And prayerfully, just like Ms. Gilliard just said, prayerfully that will happen. But I, I have to say that it was January 7th of 2021 when this rolled out. So Ms. DeVito, for you not to be aware, because I know it was in the Palaka Daily News, and I know when we passed it. So you, and we met with Mr. Miller, Mr. Steggy, no, Mr. Miller, the mayor, up right in this room. And that was early on too. So um, you, you, part of communication is you have to communicate and maybe maybe through the newspaper we were communicating but we didn't hear much back except for mr miller and a few other people that are not here and not in the historical society so we can take some blame for not communicating but you have to reach for things too and, and you, you know, have to the talk whole, to people. The whole point, let's keep in mind, the whole point, and this is why this school is our number one priority right now. I was actually in that school today, and it, it is busting at the seams. It is. And our kids are the most important part of this, and we're going to do everything we can to get them to a new structure that they most deserve. And everything else is important, but our kids are at the forefront. So, you know, that's the, our number one consideration. And you're weaving school buses in off 17, coming right down there it, it's so it just dangerous. it's just awful i don't know that's, it is i would want to see if i lived there i'd want the buses out of there but i i don't know that's just me i don't live there that it? but anyone else to come before the board during this workshop anyone else okay if not 